Hi science friends! Today we are talking about net ionic equations. So let's go ahead and jump in first with an example here. So I have given you a chemical reaction here in word form and you first need to put that into um, write it as a chemical reaction. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so aqueous solutions of silver nitrate Okay, so there's silver nitrate, and we want to write it as aqueous. That's going to be really important here, making sure to indicate when things are aqueous or not. Okay, with, so that's our plus, sodium chloride, and it says aqueous solutions. So that's implying that both of these are aqueous. Okay, to form solid silver chloride. Okay. And aqueous sodium nitrate. Okay, and we'll put that as aqueous. Now, I think I've written that um, equation out correctly. The next thing I want to do is make sure I have that equation balanced. And it looks to be um, balanced. One silver, one nitrate, one sodium, one chlorine. So that's pretty easy. So that is writing that chemical reaction. You should recognize that as a double displacement reaction. Um, the silver repaired with the chlorine and the nitrate repaired with the sodium. I think you did um, one very similar in your assignment a couple of days ago. Okay, so that's the first step, um, writing the chemical reaction. The second step is to write the complete ionic equation. And so what an ionic equation is, or a complete ionic equation, is it shows ionic compounds, dissolved ionic compounds, as their free ions. So what that means is, when you put an ionic compound in a solution, if it's soluble, okay, um, which is what we identified with our solubility rules yesterday. If it's soluble, these are soluble. They're labeled as aqueous, okay? Those are soluble. This guy here, sodium, I'm sorry, silver chloride, is um, a solid, so it's insoluble. But if they are soluble, they don't remain in the compound form. They break down into the, into the ions, and so I think I explained that to you the other day, but just to, um, just to kind of review. So for example, sodium chloride, okay, that's salt, table salt as you know it. If you put it in a solution with water, I'm going to write water as HOH. If you do a double displacement reaction on that, you should see that you would get NaOH and HCl. Okay, those ions split apart from their original compound and they recombine with other things. Some of them will recombine with other things, the parts of the water, and then some of them will say dissolved in the solution. Okay, and so um, in our complete ionic equation, we are going to identify the things that are aqueous and we are going to break them apart into their ions. Okay. Now notice I didn't do this one because it's not aqueous. So now let's write the net ionic equation. I'm sorry, the complete ionic equation. So AG, I still want you to write that it's aqueous. Okay. Plus NO3, that's also aqueous. I split that up. Plus Na, also aqueous, plus Cl, aqueous, yields AgCl. That one was a solid, so I didn't split that up, okay? Plus Na, aqueous, plus NO3, aqueous, okay? That is the complete ionic equation. And you'll have to write that on your assignment today. Um, and it's very long. I understand that. Complete ionic equations are. Okay? So we'll check that step off. Now, the next step is to 
um, um, put um, identify the spectator ions. Okay, so if you look down here, it tells us that a spectator ion is an aqueous ion that's not directly involved in a reaction, and it appears on both sides of the equation. So if we look on the right side of the equation, we see sodium, which is also on the left side of the equation. Both are aqueous, so I'm going to cross a line through them. We also see nitrate that's on the right side of the equation and on the left side of the equation. Both are aqueous, so I'm going to cross them out. Those are our spectator ions, NO3 and Na. In this example, those are our spectator ions, and that's all we have. Okay, so in our net ionic equation, when we write that, we'll rewrite the complete ionic equation, leaving out those spectator ions. So what I've got left is silver aqueous plus chlorine aqueous yields silver chloride solid. And that is our net ionic equation. And everything should still be balanced here. Okay? So, let's look at a couple of other examples. Um, we're going to skip a couple of these class practices. There's a lot of practice, and some of the examples, quite honestly, aren't the best examples. Um, so, let's skip these first few here. And we're going to have plenty of practice. Don't worry. So, let's move on over to this you try it problem. Okay, this one's just a little bit challenging. So, the equation is given to us in word form. Notice, these lessons keep building on one another. We first had to write, learn how to write compounds. Okay, then we had to learn about a little bit about chemical equations and how to write products and reactants and read them from words. And then we had to learn about predicting products in different types of reactions, okay, and balancing equations. Those are all important things, and we're continuing to put all of those skills into practice in today's assignment. So, aqueous solution of iron 3 chloride. So, I'm going to write here, the first step says to write the chemical equation, so that's what I'm going to do. Iron 3 chloride should be written like this. FeCl3. Iron has a plus 3 charge, so we're going to put that 3 on chlorine, which has a negative 1 charge. Okay? And then we also have an aqueous solution of potassium hydroxide. You'll have to read the equation closely. An aqueous solution of iron um, chloride and potassium hydroxide are mixed. Okay? If you're unsure for sure um, if it's aqueous or not, you could always go to your solubility rules and check it. Um, for this one, you would see that potassium is an alkali metal, so that's going to make it soluble. If it's soluble, you'll label it as aqueous. If it's insoluble, you would label it as solid. That means it's, it would be a precipitate. Okay? Um, so those are mixed, forming a precipitate of iron, 3 hydroxide which would be written like this and it's a precipitate meaning it's insoluble and it's a solid okay now that's all that the equation tells us but I want you to tell me should there be more what type of reaction if you just look at the left side does this look like you should say it's a double displacement reaction so, um, I need to have something else on this side of the equation, even though the chemical reaction didn't really tell me about it, okay? So, we combined our iron and our hydroxide to get iron hydroxide over here. So, what we have left is potassium and chlorine, okay? And if you check those on the solubility rules, you should find that that is aqueous because potassium is an alkali metal and alkali metals are soluble okay um so let's move on um and balance this equation that is the next step in the process balancing the equation so if we balance this we should see that we mean need more hydroxide 
and we need more chlorine, okay? So if I put a three here, that should fix my hydroxide problem. And I think if I put three here, that should also fix my chlorine problem. So in my equation, I have one iron on both sides. I have three chlorines on both sides. I have three potassiums and three hydroxides. Everything appears to be balanced, okay? So we wrote the equation. This is in a little bit of bad order, but we balanced the equation. Now we need to write the um, complete ionic equation. So we're going to separate out those aqueous ions. So let's do that here. Fe aqueous plus Cl aqueous. Now, in this equation, there are three Cl's. You see that here. Okay, we want to move the three that's the subscript into the front with the CL. That's how many there are if they're going to break apart in a solution. Okay, plus there are three K's aqueous and three hydroxides aqueous. Okay, so you can see this is getting a little bit long. Not not too hard though. Yields, I'm going to go down to the next slime. FeOH3 solid. Okay, that's solid. So I leave it um, intact. Okay. And then three aqueous potassiums and three aqueous chlorines. Okay. And so this is our complete ionic equation. We'll cross that off. We'll check that off. We've done that. Okay. Now, what are the spectator ions? So we need to look for those that are both on the left and right side of the equation. So we see potassium and chlorine are our spectator. I'm sorry. Um, uh, potassium yeah, and chlorine our spectator ions. Notice that there's three of each of those, okay? So three potassium, three chlorine. You don't really have to indicate the number. It just asks which one are the spectator ions, okay? So when I rewrite this um, net ionic equation, I'm going to remove those. So I've got aqueous iron plus three hydroxides, okay, yields FeOH3, and that's a solid, okay? And that is our net ionic equation. You should also notice that it is balanced, okay? So we'll double check the balance there. And that's how you complete these problems. They are a little bit lengthy. Okay. Um, so just to take down in your notes, so you have record of it, what is a precipitate? A precipitate is an insoluble salt. So remember we talked about a salt yesterday. A salt is just an ionic compound. Okay. It has a positive charge and a negative charge, a cation and an anion. Precipitates are often formed by, by mixing two solutions, so two aqueous things, of two ionic compounds and are frequently seen in double displacement reactions. All of the reactions we have done today have been double displacement reactions. Okay? So there's those solubility rules. Okay? So let's look at this um, class practice together. We're not going to do all of these because there's a whole lot of them and this video would go on forever. Um, but let's take a look at this one. So um, use the solubility rules to identify the precipitate formed and write the balanced net ionic equation um, for the reaction of aqueous potassium carbonate. Okay, so I've got to write potassium carbonate. Now, carbonate is a negative 2 charge, so that's going to have to be K2CO3, okay? And it tells us it's aqueous with 
strontium chloride. Now, I'm pretty sure strontium is in um, period two. Let me double check myself here on a periodic table. Sorry, I don't have a periodic table handy on me. I should. Sometimes I think I need one tattooed on my forearm so I can quickly reference it. I use it so much. Um, yes, okay. Strontium chloride is written like that. And it says it is aqueous. Okay. So, now we have to predict our product. You should know how to do this. We should see this as a double displacement reaction, which we saw yet just a moment ago that most of these are double displacement reactions. So, we should have SR... CO3 plus KCl. Okay? Now, we have to balance, um, we need to determine if these are aqueous or if they are solids. Okay? So, let's look at strontium carbonate. Okay? So, we start with our first rule. Um, salts of alkali metals and ammonia are soluble. That does not apply to strontium. Rule two nor three apply to strontium carbonate. Rule four does not apply to strontium carbonate. Now, rule five, most carbonates, um, phosphates, chromates, sulfides, and hydroxides are insoluble. Exceptions, compounds of alkali metals and ammonia. So, um, because this is a carbonate, it is most likely insoluble. And let's double check with the exception, a compound of an alkali metal. Strontium is not an alkali metal. So this is going to be insoluble. So that means we're going to write it as S, as a solid. Okay? And then the next one, potassium chloride. Okay? That should be aqueous. According to rule one, salts of alkali metals are soluble. Potassium is an alkali metal. Okay, so we he have our equation here. Now, is it balanced? No, it is not. But we can easily balance this one by adding a 2 here in front of potassium chloride. That gives us two potassiums and two chlorines on each side, and then just one of those strontiums and carbonates. So this is our balanced um, equation, our balanced chemical equation. Okay, now we can move on to the complete ionic equation. So I always like to write out that complete ionic equation just to make sure I don't miss anything. So I'm going to have 2K that's aqueous plus CO3 aqueous plus SR plus 2 Cl aqueous. Don't forget to bring those coefficients or subscripts to the front. Yields SrCO3 solid. So we're going to leave that one intact. Plus 2K aqueous. Oops. Plus 2Cl aqueous. Okay. So when we cross out our um, um, spectator ions, sorry, I'm a blank there. We're going to cross out potassium and chlorine, potassium and chlorine. Notice there were two of each on each side, okay? So our net ionic equation, this was complete, and our net ionic equation should be carbonate, Plus strontium. Um, that strontium should have been aqueous. I didn't write that there. Yields strontium carbonate. And that is the net ionic equation. And you should see that it is also balanced as well. Okay? Um, now, I want you to try this one. Okay, and then you can come back and check it with me. Remember, predict your products, balance your equation, okay, then um, write out the complete ionic equation, cancel out your spectator ions, 
and then write out your net ionic equation. So you may have got started on this one and then weren't sure where to go from here. So if you predicted the products, you should have got um, two HCl. Once it's balanced, you have that two in front of it. And then barium sulfate also, okay? Then you had to identify, are they aqueous or are they um, um, solids? Um, are they soluble? That makes them aqueous. Are they insoluble? That makes them solids. All of these should have been aqueous. Okay, so then when you write out your complete ionic equation, everything cancels out. Okay, there's nothing left that didn't cancel out. And so for one like this, we would say there's no reaction that occurs. Okay, that does happen sometime. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. And then um, I've already started it here. Okay. Okay. So I've predicted the products, and then I'm going to finish up, and I've I'm, I balanced the equation. Now I'm going to write out my complete ionic equation, and then the net ionic equation. So I'm going to pause here, and you can come back and, 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 and do that with me. So once you get this fully worked out, um, you should see that your... Um, your um, ions that you cross out are the nitrate and the hydrogen, leaving you with two silver plus sulfide yields silver sulfide. Okay. So I think that's all um, I'm going to work with you today. Um, you will have an assignment on these. Okay. It looks like this. So for these, the reactions are already written. You have to balance them, okay? Now, you do not have this paper in your binder. I apologize. I did not give it to you. So you will need to um, write these out on notebook paper. There are only five of them. So write them out on notebook paper. Write out the complete ionic equation and the net ionic equation. And then just submit that in Google Classroom. If you all have any questions, let me know. And have a great day.